So welcome back to the physics of music. In this second video, I want to introduce the topic for this course and for this series of videos. And so I want to tell you really what does physics have to do with music? And so it's useful to start by thinking about what music is kind of from a physical perspective. So if we think about, well, what is music really? Of course, ultimately it's something we perceive. And so it has to do with certain things happening in our brain. So some particular brain cells are activated and then we perceive that there is music. So we could kind of work backwards from there and say, well, okay, so those brain cells are going to be activated either if we're just imagining some music, but more often if there are certain nerve signals coming from our ears going to our brain. And so that's the next level that music would have to do with a certain set of nerve signals that might be resulting from various sounds hitting our ears. And we have some detailed understanding of how that exactly happens. How do sound waves get converted into these nerve signals. This involves a part of your inner ear called the cochlea and the variations in pressure that are present when you have a sound wave end up causing vibrations inside this cochlea that are then changed into the nerve signals. So the actual sounds themselves, physically what causes these vibrations inside your ear are these particular kinds of excitations or phenomena with the air molecules where certain signals can be transmitted. So we call these sound waves and music in particular is we can understand that as sound waves having particular properties that we're going to talk a lot about in this course. And so then we can think about, well, what is it that would create sound waves with these very specific properties that we would call music? And so there are many things that could create those from the human voice to various kinds of musical instruments. And these might involve strings or tubes filled with air or solid objects like a drum or a xylophone. And so we understand that if you play these things correctly, if you do the right thing, then these will produce those special sounds that will then ultimately be perceived as music. And of course, we know that you don't necessarily need to have any musical instruments or people singing in order to hear this music. Most of the music that we actually hear nowadays is actually being produced by a speaker or some headphones. And so that comes from maybe a pre-recorded source. So someone has pr uh, previously either recorded this music using a microphone and some recording medium or a computer, or the music actually might never have come from a musical instrument. So a lot of music now is synthesized for, uh, just artificially. Okay, so this is kind of a basic picture of how music um, manifests itself in the physical world. And you can probably see that there are many questions that we could ask about the things in this picture. And so in terms of understanding the answers to these questions, what we're going to do in this series of videos is to use some physics. And physics is really just kind of our basic way of understanding nature and the universe around us. So some of the questions you could imagine asking would be, well, you know, what is this sound? What are these sound waves in more detail? What is waving in a sound wave? Um, what is it that distinguishes music or musical notes from just other sounds from random noise? Why or how do the musical instruments produce these notes? Why do different instruments sound differently? Even if I play the same note on two different instruments, why does it sound different for a trumpet versus a saxophone versus a violin? Why do some notes sound good together or bad together? Can we understand that from an ob objective point of view? Uh, we can talk about the physics that allows us to perceive music, understand how our hearing system works, and then we can understand more details about 
the musical instruments themselves. Why do violins have this funny shape? Why do guitar, why are guitars hollow? And so forth. And we can talk a little bit about some of the musical electronics. How do speakers and microphones work? How is it that uh, a speaker, which is some piece of electronics can sound just like a human? So as I mentioned, physics is it's just in general, the subject that allows us to like both qualitatively and quantitatively understand the world around us. So I want to say a little bit just about how I understand physics and what I see as the goal of physics as a subject is to first observe the universe around us. And I don't just mean stars and galaxies. I mean, everything in our environment on the earth or in the skies. So we make these observations of various phenomena. And then what we want to do is understand the rules for what we're observing. And so there's kind of an amazing fact, which is that it seems that the workings of everything in the universe are actually much simpler than they appear at first. So through centuries of scientific progress, we now understand that when you look around at all of these diverse phenomena, they're all actually governed by a very small number of simple basic principles and what I would call very elegant mathematical rules. And surprisingly, these rules are actually simple enough for humans to understand. And we have managed to understand most of these rules. And this is very powerful. So this allows us not only to explain some of the things we see, but to make predictions for you know, things that could happen in the future based on what's happening now, or even to understand the past. So in this course, we're going to learn some of these basic rules of physics and then understand how we can use them to answer many of the questions that I posed earlier and many more questions. And one of the great things is that the simple rules of physics that we're going to learn in order to understand music, they really are the same rules that allow us to understand everything else that we observe. And so, for example, once you understand how a trumpet or a saxophone works, uh, you can use some of the same basic physics to understand why airplanes get off the ground and how they can fly. If you can understand how the violin works and why a vibrating string produces certain frequencies of sound, you can also understand a lot about the structure of atoms and the subject of quantum mechanics that governs that structure. So fortunately, we can actually understand a lot of these basic physics concepts and apply them with very little mathematics and so that's the goal of this course, that we want to understand the concepts and still be able to apply them to, say, make interesting predictions like what frequencies or pitches will a certain musical instrument produce based on its physical properties. And we can do all of that with, without much background. And so we're not going to assume that you have any physics background. We're not going to assume any kind of advanced math, just simple everyday uh, math that uh, that almost everyone should be familiar with. So in the next video, we're going to get started. And the first thing I will talk about is the idea of time and periodic phenomena in nature.